Okay, so I want to talk about the 12 tribes of Israel, but first of all, I want to share this video with you that somebody shared with me, and to uh, maybe help me as, as much as anything, really, because I'm not well studied on the 12 tribes spoken of in the Bible, okay? Now, so if you have anything to help me, I want to hear it, all right? First of all, let's listen to what this guy says all right i was watching the news a couple of days ago and i saw another bible prophecy two thousand years old fulfilled <laughs> i'm going to show it to you here now this is a map of the israel this is what you call gaza right down here where it says philistia and this is jerusalem right in here about where i'm pointing and that's the so-called Sea of Galilee, Dead Sea down here. Okay, God, this is the Mediterranean out here. Okay, Israel, as you probably know in the news, discovered oil right about where this M is, out in the ocean. And they've been mining the oil and have produced enough that they're now becoming exporters, even into Europe, putting pipelines out across Egypt. You say, what's that got to do with Bible prophecy? Well... 4,000 years ago, God knew it was going to happen. So he talked about it. I'm going to show it to you in the Bible. Here we are. I'm in the book of Deuteronomy. And Moses is blessing the children of Israel. Uh, actually, that would be um, 3,500 years ago. Moses is blessing the children of Israel, and he goes to each tribe and tells us something about them. He said at Zebulun, let me skip down here to 24. This is uh, chapter 30. 3 verse, uh, 33 verse 24 in Deuteronomy and of Asher he said let Asher be blessed with children let him be accepted uh, let him dip his foot in oil so Asher is going to dip his foot in oil this is the tribe of Asher and right out there is where the oil was found so I remember when I was in Bible college years ago we came across this passage and we discussed what does it mean dip his foot in oil and it was all kinds of interpretations like olive oil and different things and no one could really know for sure it never made sense historically uh, a prophecy like that but now we know that if you go right out to the ocean drop right down into the bottom of it there they've dipped their foot in oil now that's not all uh, Zebulun the tribe of Zebulun he said rejoice Zebulun he said, they shall suck of the abundance of the seas and of the treasures hid in the sand. That's verse 18. So here is the tribe of Zebulun right here, right next to Asher. And so right out here is where they put a, another oil well. And so <laughs> treasures in the sand and in the sea. That's He's telling us that it's not in the water of the sea. It's not in among the fish of the sea. It's out in the sea, in the sand. They're going to find treasures. And so these two tribes right here together are going to discover oil in the latter days. It's going to enrich Israel, which it's done. Bible prophecy fulfilled. Write it down. Give you another one. Uh, by the way, I've got a lot of them already online. So. Yeah, I don't doubt that. So, <clears throat> in my opinion, this guy's been watching too much Hal Lindsey. Okay. First of all, there is no tribe of um, Zebulon or tribe of Asher um, in existence today. All right. There's no nation of Zebulon, no nation of, of Asher, no nation of Israel today. The Israel that's over there today is 1948 United Nations Israel. Just because it has the same name doesn't mean it's the same people. Alright, so again, the, the world is just full of deception. Now let's prove that if we can. I mean, it, we could very easily, real quickly. But I'm going to slow play this a little bit. Alright, so he's pointed out in Deuteronomy 33 verse 24 and, he, and of Asher he said let Asher be blessed with children let him be acceptable to his brethren let him dip his foot in motor oil no I'm not talking about motor oil and I I contend this is just about being clean let him be blessed 
Thy shoe shall be iron and brass, and as thy day, so shall thy strength be. All right, now, what he's taken is this from Asher and combining it with this of Zebulon, uh, taking, oh, there's the word seas, there's treasures hid in the sand. He's taking these two, um, you know, blessings, if you will, of the of Zebulon and of Asher, and then he's watching CNN and imagining this to be uh, Bible prophecy fulfilled. Okay, so it's silly, I know, but let's. It, at the same time, it it helped me to gain a little more understanding in regards to the twelve tribes. So let me. I'm not an expert on this at all, but let me share a couple of things. All right. First of all, I guess I have to, before I lose you, just show you that these tribes are no longer in any territory. James 1 verse 1 confirms that. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Now you've heard people say, well, God has scattered the people and then he's promised to bring them back. Now, people like, um, like I think Hal Lindsey probably, and there's that John, I forget his name already. Uh, it doesn't matter. But you've heard people say that, well, in 1948, God brought them all back together. No, that's... The, all the prophecies about gathering back together God's people are about those of us that are saved and this happens at the end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven there's only one gathering there's only one harvest and it's at the end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven this is all throughout the Bible all right and they shall gather together his elect all right that's all those of us that are saved and, and you know if you've watched me I could go on and on about this um, there's just numerous scripture all throughout the Bible confirming saying the same thing over and over and over Right. Daniel 12, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. This is at the end of the world. This is the harvest. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and gathers together his elect. All right. And then our enemy is gathered together at our feet, and they are destroyed forever. Very simple stuff. Now, uh, so I just want to make that clear because, first of all, these these people were not gathered back together in 1948. That would be that, to suggest that people that reject the Lord Jesus Christ are God's holy people. That's not true at all. All right. So now uh, let's get into the twelve tribes you know what before I do that let me because I want to share this video here but let me save that here alright um because I want to show you something real quick here let's just go to here I want to make this real simple yeah I think this will be a good segue into that video all right, Second Kings chapter 17, verse 18. Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. So now we are at the time of baby Jesus. When baby Jesus was born, there was only the tribe of Judah. And then... Um, you know, I think oh, there's a lot of good stuff here, a lot of stuff I could point to, 
But again, I reckon I'm, I'm going to try to make this easy. I'm going to take the easy way out here. And Jesus says to those people, <clears throat> Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. So now, we Christians are the holy nation of God. And just as we saw with all those other tribes, they were scattered. They ceased from being a nation, and they are no longer representatives of the nation of God. In 1 Peter 2, you are a royal priesthood and holy nation. All right, There should be no doubt about it. We Christians are the holy nation of God. Now, the reason I want to share this video because I think this guy does an excellent, a really good job of, of um, showing uh, the 12 tribes and so on and the nation splitting. So let me just share 30 seconds of this. Hi, I'm Jeffrey, and right now we are going to look at the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, if you're familiar with the Bible, then you know that it falls into two large sections. There's the Old Testament, which looks at the relationship between ancient Israel and their God. And then there's the New Testament, which follows the life and teachings of Jesus and some of his close followers thereafter. Now, if you read through the Bible, you find the number 12 showing... Okay, so uh, this, I, I love that whiteboard image that's behind him there. I think he does an excellent job. So I found that image and I got it right here for you. Maybe you can see it better. Um, it's incredible how almost artistic it is, how he's got everything, you know, squared away and everything is readable. I just think that's wonderful. Um, a couple of issues I have. Uh, one is minor and that is he uses the phrase new religion. What happened was they followed false gods. Okay. Not a big deal. All right, so, but I have an, a little bit of an issue with uh, these twelve names, I guess. Uh, and I could even say those fourteen names there. So, let me just cover that real quickly. All right, in Revelation chapter seven, we've gotten we got a list of the twelve tribes. It talks about 12,000 of 12 tribes, 144,000, and the 12 tribes are mentioned. Judah, Reuben, Gad, Naphtali, Manasseh, Asher, Simeon, Levi, Issachar, Zubalon, Joseph, Benjamin. All right. So these, are, these 12 are mentioned here, and they do not square with what we're reading here. He's got Dan there, and you notice here in Revelation 7, there's no mention of the uh, tribe of Dan, right? And then Revelation 7 mentions Joseph, and then he's got Ephraim up there, and no Joseph. And he's got no Levi. So instead of Joseph and Levi, he's got Ephraim and Dan and I don't know what's going on here I don't know what everybody's teaching I just know what the Bible says so if you have any thoughts or you know maybe you can teach me something or share something with me that'll help us both I don't know but uh, it's not really huge it's just when I see something like this I want the Bible to say it and then the whiteboard should support what the Bible says as accurately as possible okay so anyways what I what I think is excellent about this video and about this whiteboard in particular is it it has uh, is so the wording is 12 patriarchs and 12 territories now you could say that's correct right but it so then the the actual 12 tribes aren't 
put in one box and that's what I was looking for but who cares so the 12 tribes of Israel are the what was the representatives of the nation of God all right keep that in mind now that's important it's simple logic simple stuff I know but I think people lose sight of it nevertheless so the 12 tribes of Israel um, were united so he's got this right if he if I'm wrong let me know but I, I believe he's got this right where they they united as one kingdom and then they split they were divided kingdom or Israel was the northern kingdom and Judah was the southern kingdom and then um, and then of course what we read there in second Kings uh, oops where um, uh, what am I what am I looking for here uh, yeah I'm right here but it's got to be so somewhere here it says all right there verse 18 I forget where I'm at therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight and there was none left but the tribe of Judah only so again when baby Jesus was born it was just the tribe of Judah and all these other like what we read in James all these other tribes were scattered and so oh well it doesn't matter so what I got to go back 50 places it doesn't matter you saw it there it is the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad uh, so it's important to understand that flesh and blood does not inherit the kingdom of God and that God is not a respecter of persons. So it, you think you got bloodline to one of those tribes? Well, it's so intermingled and it doesn't matter anyway. It doesn't mean nothing. You're not saved by bloodline. Because we all come from the same blood. We are all children of Eve. Eve is the mother of all living. So um, all that stuff is is nonsensical really I mean you you know oh I'm a Jew I was born a Jew my my great-grandpa was a Jew and that doesn't mean nothing doesn't mean nothing at all and the promise was to Abraham and his seed and he saith not seeds as is many but one seed and thy seed and that seed is Christ and if you be Christ then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise okay so the blood you know your flesh and blood it doesn't matter it doesn't mean nothing he has made all nations of one blood okay and I so I, I think people make too big of a deal out of bloodlines and all this and that it doesn't matter it doesn't mean nothing it doesn't give you any special powers any it doesn't give you any special superpowers I think you reading too many comic books if you believe that uh, and so again uh, I think this is excellent here and so there was only the kingdom of Judah and this guy this is great here that so Jesus comes along and he sets up his kingdom so that all that believe in him have has everlasting life okay um and there's a reason for all these things uh, everything has to happen for a reason and the world is in decline it's been in decline since the beginning really and it's only going to get worse and worse and worse until it's the end of the world and then those of us that are saved are going to be given a new heaven and a new earth where there is no more pain no more sorrow, no more suffering, no more death. All right. So that's the true promised land that was promised to Abraham. And not all those territories that you saw on the map that that gentleman was showing. That's not the true promised land. That's only a land where they go to die. That's it. All right. We strive for a land in which we will never die. All right. And that's the new city of God the holy city the new Jerusalem which is coming down from heaven that Jesus has promised I've gone to prepare a place for you 
And if I go, here, let me read it before I fumble it. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. All right. In the first verse, let, your, let not your heart be troubled. You believe God, believe also in me. So, all these territories that were promised... Are given, I should say, to these guys, the same thing. Um, that is not the true Holy Land. The representative of the Holy Land that is to come, and that's the Promised Land, which is the new Jerusalem, which is the place that Jesus is preparing for us and will come down out of heaven and set down on the earth. So, anyways, uh, I hope some of that makes sense. Uh, I don't know, uh, you know, what more to add right at this point. If you guys have any questions, if I'm leaving something out, let me know. So, basically, uh, this guy here is making out, out as though these territories are still in existence, that these tribes are still in these territories and um, Israel the 1948 Israel which consists of you know if you want to say 10 12 of the tribes whatever uh, he wants to say that those are the tribes of God the tribes of Israel and that they are the chosen people of God and the fact is they all reject the Lord Jesus Christ None of them are saved. They are not God's holy people. They reject God. They, they reject Jesus Christ. And there's an interesting, what is that, John 8? Um, interesting conversation that Jesus has with them Jews. And where they're claiming to be Abraham's seed. And Jesus says, I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak that which I have seen in my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said, then said they to him, We be not born of fornication, we have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why? Do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. And so on and so forth. It's a very great conversation. Very interesting conversation. The distinction is being made between. Hey, if you were of Abraham's seed. You would do the works of Abraham. Because Abraham had faith. And they do not have faith. They say they believe in one God, but they don't believe in Jesus because they don't believe in Jesus, they don't believe in God. He's making a distinction here. And like I've said numerous times over and over, it's about faith. It's always been about faith. And these people were lacking faith because they did not believe Jesus who came from God. You see, if they believed God, they would have believed him. But they were liars. Right? They were liars. So anyways, uh, a lot of good stuff. But again, I just want to say, there i got so much to learn about. I'm not an expert on this stuff at all. And um, I don't want to take any time of, uh, really, of trying to learn from other people. 
All I want to do is learn what the Bible says. So I don't spend a lot of, you know, like this guy. Um, he's got a 17 minute, minute video. And I just like the, the whiteboard and what he has got laid out here. And so what I do is I take that and then I confirm it with the Bible. And of course, uh, the only issues that I've seen, uh, you know, new religion, that's a minor thing. But again, uh, you got Ephraim and you've got Dan in there. And of course, in Revelation 7, it doesn't mention Dan and it doesn't mention Ephraim. It mentions Joseph and it mentions um, Levi as the you know one of the twelve tribes so uh, he's right when he he talks about how uh, Levi was a priesthood and uh, like an overseer and a servant for the tribes but uh, and then the so and then you got uh, Joseph of course was given Mana was given a double portion of Manasseh and Ephraim were given territories we see Manasseh here and Ephraim there and so maybe I'm not looking at this correctly what I was hoping to see is the list of the 12 tribes I and mean, I get that in the Bible I'm not getting it here on the whiteboard and so you know I'm just you know I guess I'm just um, overly suspicious and I want to get it right I don't want to be fooled again I've been fooled over and over in my life and I just don't want to get fooled again so I'm taking every precaution I can from that happening I'm checking everything out examining everything with a microscope right looking at everything very clearly or closely trying to see it clearly you dig okay so anyways uh, if you have any thoughts man share them with me let's continue this conversation it's interesting stuff but again, let me just clarify, the 12 tribes here in Revelation 7 represent the nation of God, the people of God, the people that are going to be saved. All right? And there's no special bloodline. Well, your bloodline is this, so you're going to be saved because of this bloodline that you have. There, God is not a respecter of persons. Nobody is saved because of a bloodline. Nobody is saved because of a lineage they have because their great-grandfather was so and so nobody's saved because of any of that it's always been always been about faith always it's never been about anything other than faith and that goes all the way back to Abraham who had faith he had so much faith he was gonna offer his son as a sacrifice for the sins of the whole world that's great faith tremendous faith so anyways uh, I'll just end it at that all right. Please share your thoughts. Thank you.